Shalom, friends. Welcome to the Shi'ur in Mesilat Yesharim, The Path of the Just, written by the Ramchal, Rabbi Moshe Chaim Lutato, 18th century, beautiful masterpiece in work of Musar in ethics, morals, and guidelines in improving oneself and being aware of oneself and other people and everything else that goes on in the world, basically. I'm Eliyahu Shir from Chesed Be'emet. My site can be found at www.lovingkindness.co. We're up to chapter four, and we're dealing with the trait of watchfulness and how to acquire it. We're beginning our journey on improving ourselves, and the first trait along this ladder of success is the trait of watchfulness, known as zihirut in Hebrew. Now, watchfulness means to be careful about going against things that are not appropriate to do. Now, last week, we spoke about this idea that one way that we can go about acquiring it, this attribute of being careful about things on this path of progress, perfection, growth, etc., is to be aware that ultimately, when we leave this world, we're going to be placed somewhere else. And that's where the Ramchal began his discussion. For those of you who've been with us for all of the Shiurim, we began our discussion on man's duty in the world, his obligations. We need to know that life is serious. We have obligations. We have to behave correctly so that we prepare ourselves ultimately for that moment that when we're going to leave this world, we're going to die. And where are we going to go? We're going to be taken to a place in accordance with the effort that we've put in to growing in this world, so will we be placed there. Now, the Ramchal told us last week that basically there are three types of people who need to understand the message of this idea that when we leave the world, we're ultimately going to go somewhere. You know, the fourth category of person is not really a part of this whole system. A person who really doesn't believe in God, a person who already thinks that there isn't a God, we can't convince them to behave in certain ways to grow because as far as they're concerned, they might be just part of creation. Whatever they go through in life, they do what they do, they die, there's no existence afterwards. But to the person who values that there is a God and there's going to be a consequence and a result for everything that we do in the world, he has to know that he has to be careful so that he'll prepare himself for the next world. And the Ramchal said to us, that the highest category of person is the person who is a perfectionist and he realizes that he wants the best. And he knows that in order to get the best, he has to progress to be the best. He has to do everything necessary that shows he is the best. And the Ramchal gave us an example. And he wants to say that ultimately when we die, we have in front of us this vision of other people who have gone along the same path that we went through in life, but who attained a higher level than we did. And the Ramchal says to the perfectionist, the perfectionist is not jealous of the person who attained the higher level. This is an attitude of immaturity. Anybody who feels that when you see somebody who did better than he did, and therefore he's jealous, that is exactly the opposite of the concept of growth. Growth is something that we related to ourselves. So I don't need to know how well somebody else did. See, I don't really need to know if the other fellow is driving a fancier car than I am. Because ultimately, I don't really care what car he's driving. What I care about is the car I'm driving. I need to know that I have a car that can get me from A to B. Do I need to know that uh, so-and-so happens to have a fantastic Ferrari or Lamborghini, well, I don't really need to know that. When I know that, perhaps I will be jealous. Well, that is just immature thinking. Because at the end of the day, there are nine or eight, nine billion people in the world. If I will begin to think about all the different material things that each of them has, I will start to go a bit crazy in my levels of immature jealousy. I will say, well, that one has a Ferrari. I'm so jealous. That one has a yacht. I'm so jealous. That one has a Lamborghini. I'm so jealous. But you know, I don't know all these 8 billion people. So ultimately, what I say to myself is, I don't really think about them. And I don't really care what it is that they have. What counts to me is the things that I have and that I need to succeed in my journey. If it's an expensive car that I need, then it's an expensive car. But it is irrelevant what the other person has. 
as to my journey in life. Whatever I need, I need. If I am a camper and I need a large type of caravan car, which has within it space for a bed and uh, various utilities because I'm on the road all the time, then that is what I need. And granted, that is the thing that I need. But I don't need the sports car because that is irrelevant to my journey in life. The Ramchal says when the person dies, he is not going to be the perfectionist. Is not going to be jealous to see that somebody acquired a higher level than he did. That is immature thinking. The perfectionist doesn't need to think that. The perfectionist thinks about the fact that when he sees that others attained the goal that they were required to fulfill and therefore received their particular allocation in the world above, that will upset him because he will say to himself, not that I wish that I was him who attained his level, it will be, I wish that I was I who attained my level. As we know, the famous story of Reb Zushia of Anipoli, that they once mentioned to him something about dying and so on and so forth. And he said, you know, when I die, I'm not going to be afraid if God says to me, why were you not as great as Avraham Avinu? I'll answer and I'll say I was not as great. I did not become as great as he was. Because I was not Abraham Avinu. I was not Abraham. Why did you not become as great as Yitzchak? They will say to me, Yitzchak Avinu. And I will say, because I am not Yitzchak. I am not Isaac. And therefore, I could never become Isaac. They will say to me, why didn't you become as great as Moshe Rabbeinu? I will say, because I was not Moshe Rabbeinu. But then they will say to me, why did you not become as great as Zushia of Anipoli? And to that, I will not have an appropriate answer. This is how Reb Zushia thought about his life. This is how we need to think about our lives. Certainly from the point of view, as the perfectionist does, he thinks to himself, will I have attained the goal that I was required to attain and therefore receive the reward that I will indeed receive when I leave this world. That is the nature of the perfectionists. Now we continue. Ah, that is what he said over here. Through, his, through this contemplation, certainly one of wholeness of understanding will not refrain from being watchful of his deeds. A person who thinks like that will be most careful with the behavior that he's engaged in simply because he does not want to do anything that could limit the greatness that he could attain. Ah, however, to those people who are on a lesser level, to the perfectionist, the uh, the awakening will be according to their understanding, to their distinction. However, they're going to distinct, distinguish what it is that they need to do. It will be relative to where they're at. And that is, according to the honor, according to the honor that they desire for themselves. Those who are on a lower level than the perfectionists exist on a level according to honor. And this is as follows. Because this is obvious in accordance to everybody who is, uh, has faith, a person of religious values, moral standards, that the levels in the truthful world are not divided up, this is the world to come, except in accordance with one's actions. Those who are under the level of the perfectionist, who needs to attain the level that he has to attain because that's who he is, there is the level of the person who realizes that ultimately in the world to come, we are going to gain our station, so to speak, in accordance with the deeds that we do. And there will not be that somebody will be exalted over there. Except a person who is greater in deeds than his friend is. Meaning... The greater a person is in his deeds and his actions, 
the greater the level he will attain in the next world. It has nothing to do with my own level. It has to do with the competition. This is now the competition between the fact that I'm driving the Mini and my friend is driving the Lamborghini. And we're talking about the regular Mini, of course. We're not talking about any sports cars. We're talking about the regular Mini. An average person could get the regular Mini, but would he be able to afford the Lamborghini? Well, when he looks at the person who's got the Lamborghini, he says to himself, I guess he got that because he has more money than I do. Surely if I had more money, I too would be able to get a car like that. Therefore, I feel upset. And therefore, if I want to have that wonderful sports car, I'm going to have to earn more money. Well, in the spiritual world, the person who is less than that perfectionist that we spoke about exists on that same plane of life. He says to himself, in the next world, I will have to judge myself next to the level of the people who attained their station because of the good deeds that they did. The more the good deeds that they did, meaning the more money that they had in the spiritual world, the higher the station that they will gain in the world to come. And a person who has less good deeds, who ye he will be the less, the lesser of the two. He will be the least. He will be on a lower level. He starts to say to himself, you know, in this world, if I have less money, I have to drive an inferior car. If I have more money, I can drive a better car, he says to himself. This, of course, is basically immature thinking. People who live on a more mature level of life realize that life is bigger than the Lamborghini and the Ferrari. They start to realize that there's a bit of a, there's a bit of meaning to life and not just the car. Of course, if he needs the car because he's a sports car driver and he's involved in races, well, then he needs the car. Nobody's stopping him from having the car. But if his aim in life is to attain the fastest car on the road and he's going to show his friends, look what I attained, this is an immature manner of thinking. Life is so much bigger than that. We're people. We have souls. We think about other people's feelings. We think about purpose. We think about people who are struggling and how we can help them out. That is mature thinking. We need to think a bit on, on a higher level. When we see a child and the child has an ice cream and the ice cream falls down and, and falls onto the ground and they lose their ice cream and they burst out crying and everybody in the store can hear them crying and they, they have a fit in the store, we tell the child, you don't need to be so immature. It's not the end of the world. It's not a big deal. Life is bigger than the ice cream. The child doesn't understand it. And so to the person who lives his whole life on a level of immaturity, thinking that the greater the car he drives, the greater he is. This, of course, is a level of true immaturity. But the Ramchal says that that level of immaturity exists with the person who is on the slightly lesser level than the perfectionist. He, too, behaves in the same manner spiritually as he does physically. He will be embarrassed because when he sees his friend in the next world who has attained the higher level of spirituality, the higher level of closeness to God, because he worked harder on himself, he's going to feel jealous because he realizes it's all about good deeds. The more good deeds I do, the greater I will develop myself to attain this closeness to Hashem and the greater place I will have when I leave this world. I'm not talking in a childish, childish fashion. I don't want to speak on an immature level as if do a good deed and then God puts you into a, a wonderful place in heaven. That is not what I'm talking about. We're speaking about connecting with God, the closeness to God, feeling the spiritual connection with God. When we engage in mitzvot, we reach this level of attaining this oneness, feeling this closeness to God. When we die, we wish to maintain that closeness. We wish to feel and experience that we did good, that we did in this world what God wanted us to do. It's a wonderful feeling to attain that, to die and to know that one achieved such a goal. I want to do the good, not so that God gives me the ice cream, so that I will be able to be close to God and I will experience that closeness and I will lack any embarrassment from not having done what it was that I was supposed to do in this world. But this particular person at the moment is living on this immature level and he knows that the more that he does, the bigger his place in heaven, so to speak. In Cain, if so, a four, then, 
איך יוכל האדם להעלים עיניו ממעשיו? How can a person hide his eyes from his deeds? Or למעט תשתדלוסו, or to diminish his efforts בזה, in this. אם אחר כך, if afterwards, ודא יצא לו בזמן, he'll be, he'll, he'll, he'll realize at a certain time, it, he'll know about it, he's going to realize it, שלא יוכל לתקן את אשר עבדו. He will not be able to correct that that he damaged, that that he did wrong. Now think about that for a second. This person is living on this immature level. It's not so bad. Because if he realizes that when he dies, he'll be placed into this canopy in Shamayim, this canopy in heaven, where he will delight in all sorts of things. But while he's there, they will notify him that he could have actually done a lot better. He could have got much higher. Take a look at those other souls over there who attained so much more from the good that they did. And he says to himself, I cannot change anything. I'm stuck where I am now. In this world, as human beings, as souls inside bodies, we are able to achieve all sorts of levels of growth. Once we die, we can achieve nothing because we don't have a body. Now, when we enter into that world and we see the great rewards that we could delight in, if only we had done a little more, but we didn't, at that point in time, we reflect back and say, oh, how I wish I had done what it is that I was supposed to have done. And this is the second class of person who has to realize, who has to appreciate, who has to value that ultimately when he dies, he is going to attain the level that he has attained and he'll be stuck with that for eternity. Therefore, what type of a theory, what type of thinking could we inculcate into this person to give him this ability to think straight so that he will indeed work on himself harder, so that he indeed will work on the straight of being careful of those things that he should be careful in? We have to play a game with him, so to speak. This is no longer the game of perfection because he's not a perfectionist. He doesn't understand. He's not even interested in becoming perfect. He doesn't have the time to become perfect. He wants to enjoy the physical world. He wants the better things in the physical world. We say to him, well, if you want the better things in the physical world, I have a story to tell you. When you leave this world, you're going to find yourself in exactly the same situation in the next world on a spiritual level. And those things that you have attained spiritually in this world will be yours in the world to come. but you will be able to go no further afterwards. It is almost like a person, so to speak, who in his working years, between the ages of 20 and 60, for the average person, he works hard and he puts aside some money for his pension. And then when he gets to pension age, the government institutes against him, no more work for you, they say. He says, what? No more work? Well, but I need to live. They say, well, that is why you put your money aside for the pension. He says, well, what I only put aside, X amount. They say, well, that's what you have left. That is the money that you have. That, he says, well, had I only known that, I surely would have put aside more money. Why didn't anybody tell me? People say, you should have listened to the financial advisor. What were you doing with all your money while you were busy earning it? You were buying yourself a nice car. You were buying yourself a beautiful home. You were going on vacations regularly. You were buying all sorts of tzatzkas, all sorts of things. And you put aside a little bit for your pension because you knew the pension day is going to come and then you would have the money available. Well, here you are. Hello. Shalom Aleichem. Boketov Eliyahu. Here in front of you is the pension that you've worked so hard for. He says, but I want more. They say, you want more? You should have thought about that before you entered into this transaction. What should you have done? Put more aside into pension and not involve yourself with so many physical pleasures that the money that you wasted on all those things could have gone for the sake of the pension. So when the government said to you, no more working, you would have had the money available to celebrate so many more years in retirement in such a wonderful, relaxed manner. But you didn't do so correctly. We say to the individual on a spiritual level, it's exactly the same. What pension are we putting aside? How much are we putting aside? And if we say, well, I'll have a great time and I'll put aside just a little bit, all very well and good. But when we leave this world, 
we're suddenly going to realize that that world, spiritually speaking, is no different than this world on a physical level. And the way that we've interacted physically is suddenly how we have to interact, so to speak, in the next world, spiritually. So we say to the person, you don't want to perfect yourself? That's okay. But do you know, there is a concept that the, the, the money that you earn now will be worth something to you in the future. The more that you put aside now, the more that you'll have in the future. We say, take that lesson with you today now for spiritual things too. Put aside spiritual goals all the time. Be careful what you do, do more good, and so on and so forth. So that when you die, when you leave this world, you will see the pension that is accrued to you and what it is that you've earned because of your ability to be responsible and realize the obligations that we are in this world to realize. We're going to end the shiur here. Thank you very much for joining me. Next week, when we continue, we're going to speak about a category of person who is slightly less than this level. What could be less than the person who wants honor, who wants more? Well, there is a level who is slightly less, and we need to talk to him on his level also, so that we can get him to realize the importance of doing what is necessary. I'm Elia Oshir from Chesed for Emet. My site can be found on www.lovingkindness.co. Do like this shiur by clicking on the thumbs up button. I'd appreciate it. Feel free to make a comment and of course, subscribe to my channel. If you'd like to be in touch with me, feel free to send me an email via my website and I'd be delighted to be in touch with you on any subject. If you'd like to join us and partner with us in all our activities, please do come on board, make a difference to us and hear more about all the activities that we're involved in and become a part of these activities. Thanks for joining me. I look forward to another share in the near future and I wish you everything of the best. Shalom, shalom. Bye-bye.